Hey Data Junkies, welcome back. This is Statistics with Sean Jensen. We're continuing our module on correlations and this is a part two to the previous video and this one it's sort of just sort of like a bonus video to kind of show you some extra neat things that we can do with our scatter plots and build on the scatter plots and best foot lines that we had before. So we're just going to go ahead and jump right on into it and talk about how we have these extra functions we have. Now on the screen you've got a ton of code. Try, don't get overwhelmed. Most of this code is the exact same, well, a lot of it in terms of the plot is exactly the same from our previous video. But what I'm adding here, instead of putting in the usual blue I have for our code, I'm leaving it black, and then I'm coloring in the new content for you. So in our plot function, where before we had the color was just equal to, I believe it was red, here I'm changing what we, you have in the green listings for the plot function, cull for color, it has now an if else statement. And what we're doing is adding an if else on your gender. And if the gender equals female, we're making the color red. If not, it's blue. There were only two factors in here. So if you're female, you're going to be colored red. If you're male, you're going to be colored blue. So we're nesting an if else on the color feature inside of a plot function. So by add, that's another way to add a new variable to get some details into our plots. I'm repeating the same process with the CEH option. And the PCH option is what controls how the data points look. Are they squares, circles, rectangles, diamonds, that sort of thing. And so what we have here is an if else on PCH. And if you're female, I'm making you an asterisk or a star. And if you are male, you're going to become a plus sign. And so I'm going to repeat a similar process underneath in our AB line. Before in our AB line function, that's going to generate the line of best fit, and I only needed one. But now because I'm grouping my data points by gender, I want two AB lines. One for female, the other for male. So it's the same AB line as before, but now what I'm adding in is a filter. And I put the filter on after each of the two variables in that function. And so what I'm doing is exam data dollar sign revise, open the square brackets to start the filtering and say gender equals to female, and then exam data, I'm sorry, exam data dollar sign anxiety, put in your square brackets to start the filter to say gender equals female again. That's going to do a, a best fit line for females. I copy that same code and then I change female to male and I have the females color red, the male color blue and now I'll get two best fit lines on there. At the very bottom, just now because I have the two groups, I wanted to go ahead and add a legend so viewers will know the difference of which groups that they're looking at. And I go ahead and add in a legend function and tell it to put it in the top right corner and with that legend, I'm going to put in a column to say female and male, followed by colors red and blue. And then the extra options are just uh, colors and sizing features to control the different aspects of my legend box there. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you the graphic here of what we just produced. This is the correlation plot between revision time and level of anxiety from what we had before. But whereas before it was just a bunch of red circles with a red line cutting through it, now we have red stars and blue plus signs, where the blue plus signs are the men and the red stars are the women. And we have two best fit lines. They're tracking relatively close to each other, and that's pretty much because our data points, especially in the lower right, are really overlapping each other. There's not a whole lot of distinction between them. But there could be some plots that you're going to be making where these two have really different groups out in your plot. And you'll start to see some of that there. So I think that's a really neat use for some of this. And when we go ahead and let me show you a new function as part of this slide here where we're, it's called the scatter plot function. The scatter plot function lives in the car package, the same one that we use to access the recode function and the Levine test. So through car we get access to scatter plot. And here is just a default look of the scatter plot for exam data and revise. Before we just looked at revision anxiety, this one is exam performance and your time revising. And the default setting gives us a whole lot going on. Uh, this is just straight out of the box. And so all of it is plotting in blue, first of all. It, we, it automatically gives us a best fit line. We didn't have to ask for it. But it also gives us these smoothing lines. We see it cutting through the middle along with an upper bound and lower bound for smoothing out where the data is mostly tracking. And what's also really neat is it gives us box plots on both the X and Y axis where we can see the IQR, the whiskers, and dots for additional outliers. So it's a great way to kind of get a whole lot of information in one go with just the base options. 
I'm going to go ahead and tweak these options a little bit to go ahead and uh, make it look a little bit more like what we had before. The code chunk up at the top, uh, most of it you've seen before, so it's using the scatterplot function. The rest of the code in black is content that is not new to you. It's changing the X label and the, giving it a title and you changing the size and the color. That's all uh, base for you at the moment. But I've put into blue the new features, things that are specific to the scatter plot that could be useful for you. So the smoothing equals false. That turns off the smoothing lines that we had by default. The box plots equal false. That's getting rid of the box plots on X and Y. You could specify it also if you wanted to keep one and get rid of the other. Um, or you could leave them if they're interesting to you, but I wanted to show you how to turn them off. Uh, and I left the best fit line on there because most times we want them there. But I also turned a grid on. There's a grid equals option, and I turned it to true, and it's putting in a very light background grid onto the plot, which kind of makes it nice if you want to refer to different quadrants and areas uh, of the plot to reference. So this, this is just a really neat tool that can give us v most of what we had and pretty much everything we had from the previous plots through the base plot function without having to go through extra functions like a b line and legend to add on to it. Uh, let's go ahead and take this one step farther, which really makes scatterplot shine compared to the plot function. So in this case, when I wanted to make a difference between my genders, I had to put on some extra filtering, I had to uh, do some extra specifications with the if else on the colors. Scatterplot, all I need to do up at the top is put in scatterplot, my, D, my y axis variable, tilde my x axis variable, and then I put in the vertical operator, well, it's the or function, but I put in the vertical operator followed by my grouping variable, in this case gender, but I can handle grouping variables of three, four, five, and multiple groups beyond that, and what it's going to do is it's automatically going to start grouping out by each one, it's going to automatically add as long as you haven't turned off your best fit lines, it's going to give you a best fit line for each group. You don't have to have extra lines of code to do it. And uh, it's automatically going to help you pull out different symbols for your two different groups. In this case, it shows squares and uh, triangles as the base defaults. You can change those, but uh, I just left it in as the default and it automatically changed the symbol. It also automatically changed the colors between those. So I didn't have to worry about that. In fact, actually, I take that back as I look now down at my legend code. It has a legend option. Instead of needing a separate legend code outside of the scatter plot, it has a legend option. And in the legend option, I tweaked the colors and symbols. But it'll go ahead and parse those out for you. I just specified which symbols and colors to get. So it would be a little more similar to what it was last time. But inside that legend code, I also give you additional options on how you can tweak out stuff. So everything in blue in here are new content uh, that you can pick up to go into scatterplot. The black code as code outside of the scatterplot name itself that you should already be familiar with. And it's a it's a shorter version, more clean version, to go ahead and get some fantastic tools here. Of course, you're free to explore things like ggplot, and that'll give you a whole host of other options as well, but I think this is just a nice, simple way to wrap it up in one function to get everything you need. And with that, that's going to go ahead and conclude this part two video with some of the extra features that you can get into your scatterplot functions, correlations, and best fit lines. I'll see you all in the next video where we go ahead and start building out correlation matrices.